Good evening and welcome. I'd like to call the Dearborn Board of Education meeting of March 24th, 2014 to order. Roll call, please. Pamela Adams. She is not here. Trustee Guido. Here. Trustee Lane is absent. Trustee McDonald. Here. Trustee Shellis here. Trustee Schoolmaster. Here. President Berry. Here. Next item, please. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Miss Rita Bublitz, fifth grade teacher at Gear Park Elementary School, will introduce students who will lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, good evening. My name is Rita Bublitz, and I'm oh, here I'm to sorry. represent Gear Park. Um, and I'm happy to introduce to you two of Gear Park's shining stars. This is Jaden Clark Momet from Mrs. Tim's second grade class, and Ryan Mirza from Mrs. Jennifer Harani's fourth grade class. Welcome. Okay, boys, ready? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. Well done. You gentlemen can come forward. And you look so handsome. Superintendent wants to shake your hand. Very good job. Nice job. Thank you. Again, you guys look very nice in your ties. Very good. Good job. Thank you. Next for being item, here. please. Superintendent's update agenda items. One item you see that Richard Martin, Etzel Ford art teacher, will be retiring with 24 years of service. So certainly congratulate him and wish him best luck as he enters the next phase of life. Non agenda items, real quickly, the House has passed its version of the EAA reform bill, and I'll be providing you an update on that. Uh, the legislature is also moving different proposals on school funding. You have one from the governor, one from the Senate, one from Tri-County Alliance, and I did provide the board an update in board briefs how all three of those impact the school district. Needless to say, uh, at least it's nice for the first time we're talking about real money coming into the general fund, and so that'll be the first time in my six years that that's happened, so we're certainly excited about that. State Superintendent will be visiting Dearborn Schools tomorrow from 11 to 2 with a district visit and then from 2 to 3 with all the superintendents in Wayne County. So we'll be hosting them first at Etzel Ford, then over at Cotter, uh, and then at Maples. And so any board member who would like to spend all or part of the day with us, you're welcome to do that. We will be starting at Etzel Ford promptly at 11. The League of Women Voters uh, tomorrow night will also be hosting an event here from 7 to 9 talking about schools and what districts are doing to help uh, students who are struggling. And there will be uh, superintendents from all, from all over the county, along with the state superintendent in attendance. I will be moving forward with the recommendation on moving Howe to the Heights campus, and I'll be bringing a recommendation forward to the board on that, along with our college president uh, in the upcoming next couple meetings. We do have a plaque from our Senator Mo Hood and from our State Representative George DeRaney about Dearborn becoming the academic state champions and ranked as the 14th best district. So we do thank George DeRaney and Morris Hood for sending the resolution honoring our teachers and students' accomplishments by being rated academic state champs. So congratulations on that. And Etzel Ford, is there some students here from Etzel Ford to plug the play? Please come on forward. There's a play they'd like to tell us about, the Peter Pan play. Please come on up to the microphone. The Etzel Ford will be having a the Peter Pan a play and they want to plug it real quickly. About which play? I'm sorry? About which play? The oh I'm sorry, I thought maybe you were here from Etzel Ford to talk about the Peter Pan play. Are you here for something else? Yeah. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'll take care of the Peter Pan play. April third and fourth and fifth at 7 p.m. April 5th at 2 p.m. Um, they did say they were hopefully going to send some students to plug the play so I apologize for putting you on the spot there I, with the confusion so uh, the the Etzel Ford Fine Arts Department will be putting on Peter Pan as we talked about on April 3rd 4th and 5th so anybody want tickets can see the school at Etzel Ford and it's supposed to be a very outstanding performance and I'm sure our students will do a great job uh, thank you and that's all my update Thank you. Next item, please. Citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board on an agenda and non-agenda items for action who are signed in by 7, 10 p.m. by submitting a blue card to the secretary may speak at this time. I have no blue cards. Okay. Next item, please. 
Approval of minutes. Approval of the minutes of the following Dearborn Board of Education meetings. Regular P12 meeting, March 10, 2014. Board report 13-118. Recommended action, make any necessary corrections, and move approval of these minutes. So moved. Support. We have a motion support. Any corrections, questions? Okay. Hearing no objections, the motion will carry. <laughs> Next item, please. Recognition and acknowledgments, commendations. I, yes, oh, you have some students sorry. here. Reading yes. tonight's commendations are Dearborn High students, Ali Na, Na I cannot speak tonight. Nas Rali, Rala and Ahmed Khan. Your lips are frozen. I, they're <laughs> like so sticking cold, together. Man. It's cold. That's exactly Thank you for it. being here tonight, gentlemen. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Uh, Nasrallah. You are, Nasrallah, yeah. Sorry. You my last time. It's fine. It's a common kind of mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that. And I kept looking at it like my brain and my eyes are not working together today. A uh, common mistake. Well, we're here to read the commendations. So starting off with the district, congratulations to Teresa. Trustee Roxanne McDonald, who recently completed board development courses offered by the Michigan Association of School Boards and was awarded a level one certification and an award of merit. <laughs> Commendations to all the staff and students who organized and took part in the annual Ma Ma Michael Guido Memorial Basketball Showcase held at Dearborn High School during the holiday break. Not only did the event feature great competition from our area high schools, but it also raised almost $2,200 for pancreatic cancer re <coughs> sorry, research. <coughs> it's contagious. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Etzel Ford. Congratulations to students in the Etzel Ford German Club who participated in the 30th annual German Day competition at the University of Michigan. More than 25 schools from all over the state participate in this annual event. Etzel Ford walked away with 12 awards, the most ever for the school. All three of the TV commercials performed by Etzel Ford students won first place. Their three skits won one first place and two second place awards. Holly Inger, Hannah Halzubi, and Meredith Brahab won second place in the art competition for their innate innovative 99 luft balloons dress based on the night just uh, sorry based on the 80s hit song by nana the students also performed the skit in german at the award ceremony congratulations to etzel ford high school vocal ensembles members for their fine showing at the michigan school vocal music association state solo and ensemble festival Garnering excellent ratings are senior Benjamin Timpf and sophomore Teria Berry. Earning good ratings are seniors Joanne Franz, Franz and Nathaniel Booth. Many thanks to their accompanists, Jared Nelson, Lori Hildreth, and the Etzel Ford's director of chorus, Mr. Robert Doyle. Special thank you to Geek Park, Geek Gear Park, teacher and parent Mary Timpf and Don Timpf for their endless support and taxi service. Fortson, commendations to the Fortson PTSA for raising $2,500 that will go towards the Fortson PTSA scholarship fund. Commendations to city councilman Tom Tafelski for organizing the Fortson courtyard fundraising event that raised over $4,000 that will be used for the courtyard project. Commendations to Super Greenland Market, Big B Coffee, Yasmin Bakery, Al Noor Bakery, and King's Bakery for the donation of food that fed over 400 forts on high school students during the MME and ACT testing. Dearborn High. Congratulations to Bryce Norwood of Dearborn High, who was named one of two Van Patrick High School Athletes of the Year. The award was presented to Bryce at the annual Dearborn Recreation and Parks Commission 62nd Annual Sports Award Ceremony. Joining in the celebration was Mickey Patrick, former Recreation Commissioner and Son of Sports Broadcasting Legend, Van Patrick. Commendations to the ADDHS students and the school's anti-bullying club who visited Howard School with this, uh, <coughs> and worked with the students on anti-bullying program. The DHS students split into smaller groups and visited each classroom to teach a lesson about bullying by either reading a story, performing a short skit, or presenting a mini lesson. 
The Howard students and staff enjoyed having the DHS students at the school. Special thanks to the DHS social worker, Stacy Rumler, who facilitated this meeting. Congratulations to Hannah Busi, Sarah Mackey, Jamal Magali, and Nicole Veach. All of these DHS students are part of the school's DECA club and took part in the March competition. They will now move on and participate in the DECA International Career Development Conference in Atlanta this May. Congratulations to Ali Nasrallah, who was elected as a state DECA officer for the 2014-15 school year. 13 students from around the state campaigned for one of eight positions as a DECA officer. These students had to take a written test, interview, and then campaign at the state office, state conference for an officer spot. Miller and William Ford. Commendations to the students at Miller and William Ford Elementary involved in the 21st Century Community Learning Centers program, sponsored by Access. The students spent time during the program learning about the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They went on to hold a to hold a fundraiser and collected $530 for the organization. Limburg and Long Elementary. Commendations to Limburg and Long Elementary parents, students, and staff who collected more than $4,500 and $1,200 respectively for the American Heart Association through Jump Rope for Heart during physical education classes. Thanks to Manny Marua, physical education teacher at Limburg and Long, for organizing the students and making the event a success. That's all. Thank you for being Thank here. You. We appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. I also would like to add, last night, uh, a couple of our coaches from Etzel Ford uh, received recognition, Dwayne Maycheck and Gary Schleif. Between the two men, over 80 years of service to Etzel Ford in our district, so thank you. Also, I, it's probably worth uh, mentioning the other candidates for uh, Athletes uh, of the Year, Student Athletes of the Year. These are, this is some phenomenal work by our students. Uh, I'm looking at this book right here, anywhere from a 3.5 to 4.17 GPA. Uh, from Divine Child, Lindsay Brewis was the female athlete of the year. Congratulations to her. She's, she is a dear one resident. Uh, from Etzel Ford, uh, Alexandra Henwood represented Etzel Ford. Sarah Nasser represented Fordson. And Cleo Playjack represented Dearborn High. Uh, the boys, congratulations again to Bryce Norwood. Uh, for winning the Student Athlete of the Year. But representing Fordson was Muhammad Faraj. Uh, representing Etzel Ford was Mark Sample. And Divine Child was uh, Zach Lee Walker. Congratulations to all the candidates. Uh, also, a couple weekends ago was the Key Club Convention in uh, Grand Rapids, with, where I had the pleasure to attend. I'm not going to sit here and tell you all the awards that uh, Dearborn High and Fordson walked away with, but I can tell you maybe one out of three awards was won by Dearborn High and that's for it was they did a phenomenal job. One thing I want to uh, want to mention is for the club video, this is a statewide uh, competition. Dearborn High took third place and Fortson walked away with the first prize award. Uh, that night, uh, Mr. Roger Frank, we all know uh, Mr. Frank, uh, also was recognized as the, took a first place as the Kiwanis member of the year statewide. We are very blessed in Dearborn to have all the service clubs. I'm not going to start naming any. I know I'll forget some and uh, get myself in trouble, but uh, the Kiwanis Club work very closely with the Key Cle Club, and they do uh, great work for us. So thank you to the Kiwanis Club and Mr. Roger Frank. Next item, please. Acknowledgement of donations. There are two, a donation of a grand piano and bench valued at more than $5,380 has been offered to Bryant Middle School by Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Sherwood to be used by the instrumental program, and also a, a value of $350 to move that piano was made by Evola Music. So we thank uh, Evola Music and Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Sherwood for the donation of the grand piano to be used by the students and no other. Next item, please. Special report, summer school, elementary, and middle. Mr. Brian Whiston, Dr. Gail Shankman, Dr. Jill Chokel. So Dr. Chokel and Dr. Shankman will come forward and share with you some information on the elementary and middle school programs. Good evening. 
as we know summer is a great time for students to capitalize on all the progress that they've made all year and so summer is also a very important time for students to engage in many different types of learning experiences at uh, the elementary level this summer there's a lot going on with 20 of the tw 22 summer uh, elementary schools offering summer school this summer some of the programs begin in June the majority of them will begin August the 4th and run right <coughs> up until the start of the school year in addition to that um, um, the media centers for every elementary school will be open at least a half day to one full day a week and the purpose of that is to allow all of the students in the neighborhood access to all of the books in the media center so that they can come in check out books participate in story hours there's a lot of reading enrichment activities and programs that are going to be scheduled around that in addition several of the elementary schools um, will be doing an online reading program that students can sign up for so parents who are interested can talk certainly to their child's teacher but also to the principal of the school the Programs are focused certainly on reading, writing, you know, and math problem solving. There's going to be a lot of project-based learning, as well as lots of fun, exciting field trips so that students can experience uh, some of the places that they may or may not have already visited, and we'll have lots of things to, uh, to write about. Uh, the ASAP, the Accelerated Summer Academic Program that um, the English Language uh, Department and Compensatory Education Department offers every year, will also be provided this summer for about 400 elementary students. Um, this will be offered at Miller Elementary School and Cotter by invitation and will focus on oral language development as well as reading, writing, math problem solving across content areas of science and social studies. So uh, a lot going on and um, we look forward to lots of students coming and, and uh, maximizing the progress that they've made during the school year. Good evening. Um, the Compensatory Ed English Learner Department is also sponsoring a program for our immigrant English learners in the <coughs> secondary grades. The summer program is by invitation and will be held at Stout Middle School this year. About 120 of our middle school and high school students will be participating. The focus will be on literacy and high school students can earn credit for being a part of the program, elective credit. Um, this year again, we're going to be holding our um, blended learning middle school summer program. We found it to be very successful last summer. We were able to accommodate a lot of students. So face to face at all middle schools from June 23rd through the 27th and then again August 11th through the 20th for 12 days and the rest of the time will be blended online. But we also will be having our libraries open two days a week in our middle schools all over town um, for our students from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. High school summer school this summer will be held at Dearborn High School Monday through Friday from June 23rd through July the 25th we were very cognizant of when Ramadan is and we're, we're working around that so our summer program will be from 9 to 3 p.m. and we did that last year and, and students um, actually were very pleased with us being able to compact it so they were allowed allowing them to have some time for vacation for, for summer trips um, and we're going to continue to do that we're also going to be continuing our virtual high school choices so um, a lot of our students chose to do a virtual class and uh, we're going to have that available again this time uh, our students and their parents should know that early registration is $275 per class where registration after summer school starts is $325 and all students who reside in the Dearborn Public School boundaries are welcome um, our students who attend parochial and, and uh, charter schools who live in our district are welcome to join us this summer thank you, thank you. next report DC MST Science Fair presentations. Mr. Brian Wiston, Dr. Dr. Gail Shankman, and Dr. Winifred Green. Very excited to provide to you an update on the DC MST Science Fair, and we have some staff and students that are going to be here to share with you. So please, wonderful, Dr. Green. I think that we need to make sure that when Mary asks for a report, that she Mary's be at here. the board meeting. I think this is the she third. Did. No, I oh. think it's the third time that she's requested something, and then she wasn't here to see it. it. Hello, President Barry, Superintendent. Well, we're happy to hear it. Good, yeah. good. So we have some exciting results to share with you this evening. Hello, President Barry, Superintendent Weston, and trustees. We want to thank you for the opportunity for our students to present their research projects and more specifically their competition results. But before they come up, 
I'd like to mention that, you know, the focus on these projects has been a big part of our school improvement um, project for DCMST for the past two years. Um, in 2012 and 2013, um, our goal was to improve all students' ability at the DCMST to conduct scientific research and effectively communicate the results of their research. So they'll have an opportunity to do that here to you briefly tonight. I don't think they were really aware of I think that once they saw the lights, it really sunk in that they had to come up here and speak. <laughs> but um, they'll get to do that. One of those objectives was that students earning third place and above in 2012-13 would increase by 5%. So that goal was met. And our second objective was that the number of students participating in the state of Michigan science fair would increase by 5%. So we met that goal as well. For this school year, we continued those goals, and we also focused on this, the students conducting this research and, again, being able to effectively communicate those results. Um, and a focus also was on how well they were able to analyze the data. So they'll get an opportunity to speak to you with that um, in mind. I am going to introduce Ms. Dina Parks, who is our lead teacher, and she's here tonight along with Mr. Brian Taylor. They both are teachers of this research class where students begin to formulate their ideas and massage their research, and they end up with wonderful projects such as these. Um, Ms. Parks is going to come up, and she's going to speak specifically, introduce the students, and they'll get a chance to talk about their science fair projects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. Um, we're excited to be here. Uh, the, the students uh, at DCMST get the opportunity to start with research in the ninth grade. We have a one semester course called Scientific Investigations where they're introduced to the research process, they learn about the scientific method and so on. So we give them the basis. They work um, in groups to conduct research and write research reports and present um, their findings to each other. When they get to the 10th grade, all of our 10th grade students are required to participate in our own science fair that we have. So this year we had 66 students and we had some wonderful projects. I mean, anything that you could think of. We had one student who did experiment with um, algae and wanted to do uh, on bioremediation to see if it could reabsorb carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. You're going to see these wonderful projects that we have here tonight and I'll have them introduce it. Uh, students that earn in the top placement in our fair are then invited to go on to what's called the SEFMD, which is the regional tournament at Cobo Hall. So this year we had 27 students um, attend that at Cobo Hall. Um, in the past we've had somewhere in the neighborhood of you know 20 to 30 students attend for the last few years. Um, out of that 27, um, eight of those were actually seniors who chose to do um, another project in their senior year. Um, those students, uh, a few of them participated in our DCMST science fair, but then the other ones who did not uh, participated at the SEFMD. And those students um, worked with Mrs. Kim Shaver, who is our computer tech teacher. And she did a really nice job with them too because they placed very well um, also. So out of the 27 students that participated, we did have um, numerous students earning professional awards as well as our students, we had um, the five students that earned in the top three. So we had a first place winner, we had um, three second place winners, and a third place winner. So you're going to see our first place winner tonight, uh, you're going to see one of our second place winners, and then the, uh, another one of our young ladies that's here tonight actually earned the grand prize in our DCMST science fair, and she's here tonight to show you her project as well. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Taylor, is is here and I want to give him some credit too because um, several of the projects that did quite well at the state tournament um, were under his tutelage so um, we're both sponsors of these students we're very proud of them they went on to do a great job and, and represent the district and those five students will be going on now again representing the <coughs> district at the state tournament which, which will be held at Kettering and students that do well there are then invited on to internationals um, we did have two students that proceeded to the state fair last year and they won scholarships to Kettering. They didn't take them, but they, they won them, which is nice. Um, so without further ado, yes? All right, so I'm gonna call um, Eric up first. Where'd you go? <laughs> Eric Sorensen, um, his project is called Utilizing Vehicle to Vehicle Technology to Increase Driver Awareness. I don't know, would it work better?
can he talk over there? Or no. he Unfortunately, he's got to talk there, but maybe the board would like to go over there while he's, can we go over there and look? Is that what we should do, or when should we do that? We've got some video. How about okay. if, if Eric talks about his project and then, mm -hmm. you know, if you haven't seen the board, you, you okay. folks they're displaying it yeah. okay. later the board, on the monitors. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, great, great. All right. So there you go. There's the board behind you. Yeah. Uh, hello. So uh, basically my project revolves around um, reducing uh, drivers using their phones while they're driving. And basically that it's um, the main feature that my smartphone application has is that it automatically responds back to um, text messages. But obviously people aren't going to sign up to have their smartphones restricted. So what I try to do to try to uh, attempt to compromise is to have the smartphone adapt based to what uh, driving scenario that the driver is in. So basically if you're in a safe driving environment, uh, the tone of voice of the automated response would be a lot softer and like baby, like say for example, you could like pull over and just text if it was really important or like say if you were driving in like a highway and there's lots of cars around you, then therefore like the tone of voice would be a lot more harsh and like I can't talk now. Like, uh, the, we'll have to talk later, that sort of thing. Neat. Very, Very neat. cool. Thank you. And needed. <laughs> Very <Yes>. well needed. <laughs> okay, so my name's Hope Clito, and my project was the effect of different organic fertilizers on radish plants. And the reason I did this project is my dad runs an organic farm in our community near Long Elementary School and they've been using fertilizers uh, they've been using leaves as fertilizers that get collected every year after the leaves have fallen from the trees so I tested four different groups of fertilizer to see which would be most effective for the farm and the first group was a uh, it was a top it was a potting soil it was just a regular potting soil there was nothing added to it the second group was potting soil with leaf matter as fertilizer. The third group was potting soil with leaf matter and eggshells as fertilizer. And the fourth group was potting soil with leaf matter and coffee grounds as a fertilizer. And after I had 48 groups, I had 48 plants in each group of plants, meaning there were like 192 plants total. And I had to measure them once a week for four weeks. And after that, uh, my conclusion was that uh, radishes grow best with fertilizer that is made from leaf matter and eggshells. Leaf matter and eggshells. Wow, well, yeah. I have to oh. tell Mike, he'll yeah, be Mike's very interested in that. Yeah. My, my husband is a garden person. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank sure you very much. Thank Fabulous. You. Leaf matter and eggshells. Mm -hmm. My name is Elizabeth Roman. Um, I go to DCMSD and Dearborn High, and my project is called Generating Electricity Using Playground Swings. Um, I came up with this idea while on a walk with my dog. <laughs> um, green schools are a really popular concept today. There's a, a banner up there, and um, I figured why is there not a way that we can use the kids and teach them about the generation of electricity, but also have them involved in it. So I took the concept of a magnet running over a coil of wire, and when that happens, um, the electrons in the coil of wire excite, creating the electricity. So I created two prototypes, um, one to prove that it would actually work, and the other one to show um, that a light bulb could be turned on by the swing set moving. Um, uh, the, I won the grand prize at my DCMST science fair, which I'm very thankful for. Um, and then at the SEFMD, which was a, a great experience, I definitely, um, it's a very professional environment and it, it's kind of a wake up call to see so many professional people in one area talking to you about your project. Um, and so I'm very thankful for the whole opportunity to go. So um, I'd also like to give a thank you to my teacher, Ms. Parks, and my dad for providing such good support and <laughs> helping me along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good job and congratulations. I'm thinking there could be like a home application to this too. You know, my seven-year-old has a lot of pent-up energy. energy yeah. that, you know, maybe we could figure out how running up and down the stairs could <laughs> save me on my electric bill. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, instead of shocking people. <laughs> so how long are these going to be up? Are they going to be up the rest of the meeting? Do we need to look at them now or we'll leave them so we can look at them after the meeting? Okay. Thank you. Great. This thank was you. excellent. Thank yeah. you so much. So, it's always good to hear from the students. So we certainly thank you for being here tonight, the students, the families, and uh, Ms. Green and the teachers. Mm -hmm.
Uh, this is bringing science alive to kids, and it's very exciting to see them so excited about it. So good work. Yes. This should be part of the road show to the uh, to the middle schools where they, you know, recruit kids to these programs. They, Did you hear that? You know what, uh, uh, some Amy of the was students saying as you recruit kids, taking these the kinds of things show. with you on the road show to, to show others. Yeah. Sure. And some of the students from the school were at the elementary at the Henry Ford, yeah. up in uh, the younger ones. So they that's, that's been started already. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank now you. Now the award is you don't have to stay the rest of the meeting, although you're welcome to. <laughs> but you don't have to. <laughs> you guys do. <laughs> He's ready to leave. Yeah, Joe is about yeah. ready to leave with us. Like, no, Joe, you can't go. Again, thank you very much. Appreciate Next it. item, please. Action items. Special consideration of an action item. Are there any agenda items on this agenda which board members or the superintendent wish to discuss and vote on separately? We have a supplement. Number 10, we need um, a roll call. And I didn't see anything else that requires a roll call. Do we need to add uh, the um, next, uh, for the next meeting? Is this when we do this, or can we do that? Uh, yeah, we could do it now. Yeah. Um, I just don't remember what section is. Is it eight? Is personnel eight C? Got your little cheat. I think it's eight C. So if we want to add, um, calling for an executive session for personnel. This issue. one is personnel too, and it's eight E. So, but we, we can. No, we this can, one's we, legal. This is legal. This okay. is legal. It's eight E. Okay. I believe well, we can figure personnel it out, is eight C. Yeah. When it, our next meeting is not until the 14th, Four, yeah, yeah, the 14th, 14th. do we want to do a 6 o'clock meeting? 6 o'clock meeting, yeah. Okay. So we'll need a roll call, so I'll, I'll just sure, I'll sure. write a motion so really quick. 10 and 11, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, move that action items numbered one through nine be approved as recommended in this agenda. So moved. Support. We have a motion to support. I would just like a clarification on board report 13-121 under leave of absence. It's an extensive list. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Whiston if uh, you can kind of clarify what is a leave of absence and how long can that be? And most important, uh, just as important as your cost for district, please. Right. So there's no cost if a teacher asks for a leave of absence for us. Uh, they can, is Glenn here? Three or four years they can ask for a leave of absence? They can go to four years and ask for an extension each year, up to four years maximum. And it's up to the board to grant. You don't have to grant. And there is no cost to the district for someone to go on a leave. Correct. We don't pay them while they're on the leave. But what happens when you replace them and they decide they want to come back? Generally, it's worked out that we have openings. But it could work out in a sense where someone wants to come back and we didn't have an opening. And we would. We don't have to bring them back at that point? Or well, we what happens is we bring them back and then they come into our new ranking system that the board approved last year under new legislation with policy. If they are actually out for two years, what would happen is that their ranking becomes lower than any effective teachers. So if they're out one year, they come in and it goes under uh, the normal ranking and we look at their most recent year in evaluation, which okay. is now in the board policy. After two years, they actually get ranked lower than any of the effective or highly effective teachers. Okay. So in that case, if they did come back and we had to lay someone off, then there would be a cost, obviously, because of it. But generally speaking, that hasn't we, happened. We haven't had any issues with that because we've been higher. You know, we've been higher. Generally, every year we hire thirty. We, 30 we haven't people. had a problem. Yeah. So. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. So there's a motion on the table in support. But if I don't hear any objections, the motion will carry. Uh, next item, please. Summary of agenda action items. One is approval of warrants, which are items for payment by the district and have been reviewed by the administration. Number two, approval of new five-year contract renewal for beverage vending service. Number three, approval of a new five-year contract addendum extension for security fire alarm and CCT closed circuit TV systems monitor monitoring service services. Uh, number four, approval of technology design and project management services. Number five through seven, approval of non-instructional and instructional personnel items for P12. 
Number eight, approval of parent advisory committee representative for Wayne County Risa. Number nine, approval of donations. Okay, thank you. We'll move back to item number 10, please. Number 10, uh, move that an executive session be held on Monday, March 24th, 2014, immediately following the board meeting at the Administrative Service Center in the Superintendent's Conference Room. The purpose of the closed session is to discuss a legal matter per Section 8E of the Michigan Open Meetings Act. So moved. Support. Motion support. Roll call vote, please. Sorry. No problem. Okay. I'm lost in my paper clip. <laughs> Trustee Guido. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Shellis. Yes. Trustee Schoolmaster. Yes. Trustee Barry. Like I needed a list anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean you could look around the room and kind of figure out. It just our occurred names. to me, I apologize. <laughs> been We've been day. together for ten years. I know. <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> 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 but it's got to be by the book. <laughs> Moving on to item okay. number 11, please. Number 11, uh, move that an executive session be held on Monday, April 14th at 6 p.m. in the Administrative Service Center in the Superintendent's Conference Room. The purpose of the closed session is to discuss a personnel issue per Section 8C of the Michigan Open Meetings Act. So move. Support. support. You have a motion to support. Roll call. Roll, please. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Guido. Yes. Trustee Schoolmaster. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Sellis. Yes. Trust, uh, President Berry. Yes. <laughs> See, I did it with my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next item, please. Uh, no discussion, discussion items. None. none. Acknowledgement of correspondence. I think we received a few. Did everybody receive... Uh, a letter from uh, Mr. John McDonald. Alexandra, receive it. Was it? Did it come in the mail? Yes, should have received I it Friday receive it. or and Saturday. And I did not receive it. If it came in the mail. Okay, I didn't bring my copy. I'll uh, I'll scan it and email it to everybody. Okay, thank we'll you. Do, we'll take it from there. Is there anything else? Okay. Next item, please. Board of Education business board member committee and organization reports. Trustee Shellis, you have a report. <laughs> uh, today, the uh, superintendent evaluation slash presidential evaluation committee met, and we've started to um, develop a tool. Uh, the goal this year is to try to solidify a tool so that we're not using a different tool every year. Part of this comes from um, rhetoric that we're hearing from the state that they're going to mandate that a, a universal tool be used. And so the tool that we're looking at, we're anticipating, is going to be um, one of the tools. Uh, so far in our initial evaluation of it, I think it has merit, and I think it's very well put together. Um, the next step is for us to uh, let it marinate a little bit, take a little deeper look into it, and see you know, if we think it needs improvement. The next step would be for the committee to get back together um, along with uh, Mr. Whiston and um, Dr. Jensen to work out the details and make sure that we have everything in place. We need to, in order to use this tool this year, we would need to incorporate the goals that were set a year ago um, so that we're not changing the goals or you know, having an ambush evaluation. We want to make sure that, um, that we're grading them or judging them or evaluating them on the goals that they had set a year ago. Um, and then we'll also use this tool to set the stage for next year's evaluation. Um, but we also want, as a committee, we want to work towards um, putting together some language to be put into the policy to develop a more solid process so that we're not going through this process every single year. Um, we want to make it more um, solid, I guess, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're following a process. We're also looking at incorporating in into the evaluation process a 360 evaluation or a full view um, using community engagement. Um, on, on we're looking right now at a three on a three year basis, so every three years or once within a three year period. Um, but we haven't quite worked out all the details of it yet. So once we get to that point, we'll bring it to the full board. Great. Anything to add? Did I miss anything? Email? No, other than. We're trying to wrap this up so we give everybody a, an opportunity before June. June, yeah. Well, we would like to June. get it together <coughs> to send to the board um, by the middle of May so that we can receive them back by the middle of June so that we can have it wrapped up by the end of June. Fantastic. 
Okay. I'd like to thank Dr. Glenn Maleko for yes. joining us and providing us with some very valuable information. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, any, I think that's it on reports. Okay, next item, please. Board member commentary. Trustee McDonald. One thing I just want to mention is uh, one of the action items that we uh, approved tonight was um, for the Wayne County Parent Advisory Committee, uh, we needed to appoint a new head person there. But I just want to give some special recognition to uh, Mrs. Richards, who served on that com uh, committee for over seven years, and uh, welcome Ms. Uh, Sana Abbas, who will be serving in that capacity as well. Both of these women, and also uh, mentioned to uh, Claire Brick, they are very engaged parents, and I just can't say how uh, how much that does for not only their own students, but all the students in the district to have parents that are that involved and engaged in what we do. So thank sure. you to them. Yeah, thank you for catching that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Next item, please. Requests for information and or future agenda items. I think we should have more reports like we did today. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I don't know if this is uh, information request, but uh, don't blink. Uh, graduations will be here. What yes. I'd like yeah. to see oh is uh, an events, maybe like a memo for the month of May and the first couple of weeks in sure. June. Mm -hmm. May, you know, June, Update calendar. it as, you know, yep. as mm -hmm. needed. Sounds good. Just to kind of help us plan ahead a little bit. Yeah. It'll be here soon. Do, uh, I'm sorry. Has there been any plans for, uh, I know there was a question about the starting of the work at Etzel. Yeah, so we did move the graduation to That's for the sure. Deer Board, yes. Okay. Regardless of whether the project starts or not. Okay. Because we had to commit to the, to the auditorium. Venue. Okay. Sure. It's the same night, same everything. Just So we better make sure that the project gets started. There. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's out to bid and we're <laughs> expected to be, so. <laughs> I'm getting the thumbs up. <laughs> uh, next item, please. Superintendent's report, personal commentary. None. Other. None. Wow, it's only a quarter to eight. I know, but I need you for a few minutes <laughs> still know. at the executive <laughs> session. <laughs> Future meeting dates, Monday, April 14th. Uh, we we, wait, we right have after this. We six have o'clock. Uh, yeah, six. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we actually, tonight, Mar yeah. uh, Monday, March 24th, immediately following this, we have a closed session. Monday, April 14th, 2014, at 6 p.m., we have a special closed session in the um, Superintendent's Conference Room in the Administrative Service Center. Monday, April 14th, 2014, P12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. Monday, April 21st, 2014, HFCC meeting, 7 p.m. at the Andrew Mazzara Service and Conference Center in the Rosano Boardroom, Henry Ford Community College. Monday, April 28, 2014, P12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. Monday, May 12, 2014, P12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. We are adjourned. So we could meet in my conference room right here. I need.